Strange details about the Statue of Liberty's feet are throwing historians into a frenzy. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe to MNR TV and hit the bell so you never miss any upload from us. Also, leave a like right now. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, reads the iconic poem on the base of the Statue of Liberty. For generations, the gift from France to the United States has served as a beacon of hope for those in desperate need of a better life. Everyone's familiar with the magnificent statue's torch and her commanding spiked crown. But there's a whole lot more going on with Lady Liberty's design than people realize. Look at Lady Liberty gazing out over the New York Bay, holding her flame up high to signify hopeful light at the end of the long tunnel of life. A lot of people visit every year to bask in her patriotic glory, over four million per year, and yet most of them miss some key details. Granted, there's a lot of the monument to take in, both inside and outside, from her head to her feet. While Lady Liberty is quintessentially American, it was a Frenchman who first envisioned her, and he had big plans for what this statue could represent to the broader world. Scholar and poet Édouard de Laboyer first came up with the idea in 1865 to celebrate the upcoming 100-year anniversary of the United States' independence. Being a man of the written word, he lacked the design experience the project would need. But luckily, a famous sculptor stepped in. French artist Frédéric Auguste Bartholdi caught wind of La Boyer's idea, and he loved it so much he dedicated his time to making it a reality. However, even he needed assistance figuring out how to make the 300-foot copper statue stable. So none other than Alexander Gustav Eiffel stepped up to the plate to offer his engineering talents. Names sound familiar? Yep, he was the brains behind the Eiffel Tower. He helped the French sculptor implement some very meaningful symbolism. For example, the spike crown that's resting atop Lady Liberty's head signifies light beaming out across the entirety of Earth. Of course, another important part of the monument was nestled in her left hand. Though it's hard to see, the large tablet the statue holds has Roman numerals marking the date of the Declaration of Independence, a reference to the founding of the United States, and no one can ignore the flame in her raised right hand. The torch, some might argue, is the most important part of the whole monument. It stands for enlightenment, lighting the way to freedom and illuminating the path to liberty. While all these pieces were laden with meaning, Eiffel faced the challenge of actually building and transporting them across the Atlantic. The logistical challenges didn't stop them. Once the structure was completely assembled in Paris, it was then disassembled and shipped in pieces on a frigate. It arrived June 17, 1885, and the new construction then began in America. Once the statue was finally rebuilt more than a year later, it soon welcomed large groups of immigrants who poured in off of ships from overseas, seeking the exact life of freedom the monument symbolized. However, visitors back then had an experience with the Statue of Liberty that few have had since. Up until 1916, visitors could ascend all the way up into the torch. However, a massive explosion caused by German spies during World War I permanently closed the area. This wasn't the last time the monument had a role in a war, either. In 1970, a group of women's rights activists held protests on Liberty Island, and one year later, it yet again garnered attention for protests against the Vietnam War. But through all this admiration of the statue's symbols, there's one few know even exist. Why would anyone pay too much attention to the statue's feet, when clearly the most important symbols are the torch, crown, and tablet, right? Well, notice how her right foot is slightly lifted off the ground. This was very deliberate. 
Take a look at the other foot now. See that broken chain? It's supposed to show Lady Liberty freeing herself from shackles. And this lesser known symbol was all due to deeply held beliefs La Boyer carried with him. Not only did the Frenchman respect and admire America, but he was also an abolitionist who was president and co-founder of France's anti-slavery society. Although slavery was outlawed in France at the time, the group believed there was no place for it anywhere. Now, the next time you think of the Statue of Liberty, keep in mind the deep symbolism about banishing slavery and spreading enlightenment to the world. However, there's still one more written vital piece to the monument no one can ignore. A poem titled The New Colossus, written in 1883 by poet Emma Lazarus to help raise money for the statue's massive installation project, was meant to paint America out as a safe sanctuary. But in 2019, it fell into some controversy. Opponents of immigration suggested the famous line, give me your tired, your poor, to end with, who can stand on two feet and won't become a public charge. The addition wasn't taken seriously, but it did spark a bigger conversation. The Lazarus poem still reads the same as it has for generations, and Lady Liberty still stands for a welcome escape from the persecution for all. And she'd definitely give a huge hug to every person who crossed her path if she could. There she is, emboldening all those who look to admire her copper strength. Her entire story from start to finish is a magnificent journey. And it's one that has tons more tidbits of information only few really know. From secret inspirations to changes over time, Lady Liberty is chock full of secrets. To ensure Lady Liberty stood the test of time, French sculptor Frédéric Auguste Bartholdi hired engineer Alexander Gustav Eiffel, yes, that Eiffel, to figure out the structural logistics of the massive monument. Bartholdi also modeled her face after his mother, Charlotte. Bartholdi began building Lady Liberty in France in 1875, hoping to have her finished by July 1876, in time for the 100th anniversary of the United States Declaration of Independence. However, he severely underestimated the statue wasn't complete until 1884. The statue was a gift from France, but the U.S. had to furnish a pedestal to put it on. The poem, The New Colossus, was donated by Emma Lazarus to an auction raising money for the pedestal, into which its words were later etched. Surprisingly, the Statue of Liberty has an even more formal title. It's the Statue of Liberty Enlightening the World. With a mouthful like that, no wonder we've given her so many nicknames, like Mother of Freedom, Lady of the Harbor, and even Green Goddess. During the decade-long delay of the statue's construction, the American people were on the fence about the new monument. Suffragettes protested her unveiling. She was a woman representing liberty, while American women didn't have the right to vote. When Paris gave us the 100-plus-foot-tall version of the statue, they kept a few smaller 9-foot versions for themselves. Paris-dwelling Americans also gifted a replica, a quarter of the size of the original, to the city in 1889. Although Lady Liberty looks small next to many of New York City's massive skyscrapers, she wasn't small in the 1880s. Standing at 111 feet tall and 305 feet including the pedestal and torch, she's still taller than any 21-story office building. All that height carries some serious heft, too, with a frame constructed out of iron and steel and then coated with a surface of two and a half millimeter thick copper. Lady Liberty punches in the heavyweight class at 31 tons. If you were to go up to the statue and try to compare hand or foot sizes, you'd be considerably outmatched. Stretched out straight, her index finger alone would be eight feet long. And with sandals 25 feet long, she officially wears a size 879. When the statue's interior is open to visitors, you can climb a spiral staircase all the way up to her crown. On the way up, you can see the interior framework 
At the top, enjoy a panoramic view of New York's harbor out of any one of 25 windows. Did you know Lady Liberty's current torch isn't the original? She got an upgraded lamp plated with 24 karat gold when she was renovated in 1986. The original lamp still exists and can be seen at the Statue of Liberty Museum. A hundred years ago, visitors could climb into the actual torch, but after an explosive attack near the statue in 1916, the torch stairway was closed to the public for safety. However, you can still see those grand views from the virtual torch cam online. The Statue of Liberty is full of hidden symbolism. The seven points of her crown represent the seven continents and seas, and she faces southeast, the direction of most arriving ships. The tablet in her grasp bears a Roman numeral translation of July 4, 1776, and the broken cuffs on her ankles represent freedom. It's hard to imagine Lady Liberty in any other color than her classic gorgeous green, but when she was new, she was the color of a new penny. After about 30 years of copper being exposed to the elements, she gained a natural oxidized patina. Lightning strikes high points, and Lady Liberty is the tallest thing in New York's harbor, so she gets struck often. So often, the National Park Service can't keep count. Fortunately, the concrete and granite pedestal she stands on grounds the electricity, so there's no danger of damage. For about 20 years after her installation in 1886, the Lady's Torch was bright enough to be used as an actual lighthouse for incoming ships. It could be seen 24 miles away, and there was a power plant on Liberty Island specifically to generate power for the lamp. The 1980s were a glam time for everyone, and that included the statue. Between 1984 and 1986, she got an inside and out multi-million dollar renovation in preparation for the centennial of her completion. Prior to the renovation, visitors climbing up the inside stairs were unable to see clearly the statue's impressive framework. Sadly, it wasn't long afterward that tragedy closed those stairs for nearly a decade. The terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001 closed Liberty Island for 100 days and the statue's base wasn't open until 2004. Finally, in 2009, tourists were allowed to climb to the crown again. Visits to Liberty Island are even more educational since 2019, when the National Park Service opened the new museum. It features a theater, two gallery spaces, and the original torch, as well as old immigration artifacts from Ellis Island. Almost four and a half million visitors go out on the ferries every year to see the statue. And those numbers have increased tenfold since just a decade ago. Tickets for the Liberty Island Ferry are $19.25, and once you get to the island, it's only another $3 to go up to the Crown. But once you've crossed the statue off your bucket list, you can explore New York's more under-the-radar attractions.